In this video, we're going to go through the reaction energy diagram for SN1 reactions. And uh, the, the reaction we're going to talk about in particular is a, is a fairly straightforward reaction. We're going to talk about the SN1 reaction of tert butyl chloride, which is this molecule here, with water. We're going to dissolve tert butyl chloride in water, and this is going to give us tert butyl alcohol, and um, we'll say one equivalent of, of, for our purposes, HCl. Now, this is a reaction that goes through an SN1 reaction. Remember, the big barrier in the SN1 reaction is the formation of a carbocation, and this is a tertiary alkyl chloride. So let's draw out what the the energy the reaction energy diagram is basically a description of how the energy of the system changes with time. So let's draw on the y-axis is going to be our energy and the x-axis is going to be our reaction progress. So this is energy. I don't know why it keeps doing that. All right, energy and reaction progress. Progress. And at the bottom left, let's say that we're going to start with our reactants here. So they're going to have this energy. So we've got tert butyl chloride and water. So they're infinitely far apart. They're infinitely far apart. And, and in fact, actually, in the SN1 reaction, remember that this is a first order reaction. It does not depend on the presence of water at all. So what's going to happen in this SN1 process is it's going to slowly, the, remember the first step in the SN1 reaction is the leaving group leaves. So we're going to have slowly increase in energy as we are breaking the bond between our leaving group and our carbon. So we should draw this up. We're going to, going to continue until it hits, hits a maximum. So this maximum is kind of like the point of maximum pain for the molecule. The, the highest energy for the molecules where you have a partial you have a partial uh, bond between carbon and the chlorine. And this high energy area is called the transition state. So this is the transition state. And slowly, the as the leaving group finally departs, it's going to start actually increasing or becoming more and more stable again until we reach a little, actually maybe shouldn't draw it so, so low. Let's draw it over here. Reach a little, a little valley here. And this valley contains a, an isolable species. Remember, it, our transition state's got a partial bond here. We can't isolate a transition state. We cannot really observe or we can't isolate the molecule that corresponds to the transition state. However, we can isolate and observe carbocations. Let me try drawing that again. So this is a carbocation and it's got a positive charge. Now because we can isolate it, there's no partial bonds here. These are all full bonds and it is a carbocation, which means that it's more unstable um, than a normal starting material would be. This species in the middle here, this carbocation, this is what we call, this is called an intermediate. So, like I said, you can you can actually observe them. People have observed and isolated carbocations. You can you can we know what they look like, and they're kind of this little valley in between the uh, transition state and, and there. So, before going further, we should just sort of note that we've got a name for this energy as we start go from the starting material to the first transition state. This is called the activation energy or EA. So this is ac activation energy. So this is the activation energy. You get to this first bump and then we relax. It gets to a lower energy state. And now on the second step of the SN2 reaction, this is where, or sorry, SN1 reaction, this is where our water comes along. So a molecule of water comes along and it attacks our carbocation. Now, as the bond between 
the, as the oxygen gets closer and closer and closer to the carbocation, we're going to have a partial bond between the carbon and the oxygen, and it's going to reach a point of sort of maximum energy at a point where there is another partial bond between the carbon and the oxygen. So it's going to look like partial bond is here. But it's not going to be as unstable as our initial situation was because we're going to have actually a stronger bond between the carbon and the oxygen. And as we continue along, we're going to actually, as we go between carbon and oxygen, having a stronger and stronger bond, the energy is going to decrease and it goes from being a partial bond to a full sigma bond. And this would give us uh, this species here which now has the OH2 bonded to it. And this corresponds to the energy diagram for the SN1 reaction. Subsequently, there is going to be an acid-base reaction where we're going to remove a proton from the OH2 to give us the neutral alcohol. But that isn't really considered part of the SN1 reaction itself. That's an, that's an acid-base reaction. So we're going to leave that out of our uh, SN1 reaction energy diagram here. Now, a few other things to note. Now, between our intermediate here and this transition state, there is actually a second activation energy. So going from the bottom to, to the top of this transition state, there is a second activation energy. Now note that it is smaller than the first activation energy. So if we say that this is Ea1 and this is Ea2, Ea1 is greater than Ea2, which is a different way of saying that there's a greater barrier for the first step as opposed to the second step. And, and the barrier, the height of the barrier is related to the rate. So that means that there's a, a higher barrier equals a lower rate. Higher barrier equals a lower rate. So this is actually going to be our slow step, and this is going to be our fast step of the SN1 reaction. And this corresponds to experiment, right? The slow step in, in the SN1 reaction is the loss of the leaving group to form to, to form the carbocation. And then the fast step in the SN1 reaction is the attack of the nucleophile on our carbocation, eventually giving us our final product, which in this case is, is deprotonated to give our neutral alcohol. So that is the reaction energy diagram for a simple SN1 reaction.